I was thinking about like a oh, fun thing I should do, which is like instead of trying to find a cool band or something or people to record music with, I should just write like five like semi decent songs that aren't horrible, and I should just like apply to some local clubs or something as a solo act and just go up there and sing my little tunes and go get my name out there. I think that'd be fun. As a person who hates music, I think that's lame. <laughs> I was hoping you would say that. With all your heart. That's the annoying thing about music is like the, all the stereotypes, like the shitty stereotypes about like punk guys and like metalhead guys and like dudes who like heavy music and stuff are actually true. Like they actually are creepy and fucked up and weird. Like it's really unfortunate. It's not just like a mean stereotype about guys who like weird music. It's like people actually suck. So it's like, god fucking damn it. If I, I don't want to know any of these stereotypes. It's definitely a thing. There's just, like, in the underground music scenes, there's just a lot of creepy older guys. It's a very real thing. And so it's just like, every time I try to be social, it's like, god damn it. This cool person who likes this cool band that I like actually fucking sucks. Because of course they do. So I just have to go out on my own, I think. I can't depend on the public. They'll always fail me. Uh, don't you strive to be one of those weird old creepy people? Very much do not. <laughs> you don't? It's just unfortunate because I like the same things as them. But that's it. You don't just have on your vision board that you want to be like a creepy old dude? I mean, I think that's just my destiny regardless. Do you know any furries? You. I'm not a furry, shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm glad that you got mad about that. Why? That was actually mean. <laughs> nice. I'm actually not sure if I know any furries, because I feel like some people who are furries probably don't want to admit that they are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like at least one of your sisters is a closeted furry. It's entirely possible, not gonna lie. They definitely have that personality type. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of them is literally, like, one of those, like, cringy communists. But it's, like, next level. Like, they'll do, like, whiteboard drawings of, like, Mao Zedong at school. Uh, even, that's not even a good communist. That's, like, a horrible dictator. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm always trying to be, like, come on, kid. There's absolutely no way that you're just, like, casually talking about Mao Zedong. Like, he's not genuinely a horrible dictator. At least pick one that's not, a, like, genocidal, right? Like, you can like Karl Marx, but, like, Karl Marx wasn't really a, a dictator. He was just a writer. He was literally just, like, an author. He didn't have the pick, opportunity to become a genocidal he, maniac. Right, you know, but don't, like, glorify Stalin. That's too far. Don't celebrate Stalin's birthday. I'm pretty sure they celebrated Stalin's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and that may be... Like, I'm not sure if that happened, but it, I'm pretty sure it did, and that is extremely cringe. Like, I, I brought it up to them mildly once. I was just like, you know, it's really weird to glorify politicians, especially dictators. And they were just like, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, since they're not technically part of the proletariat anymore, they're not as virtuous. And I was like, no, you're you're missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It was really a, a quite a funny moment. God, next time I see them, I'm just going to ask them straight up to their face if they're a furry. I don't know. No Why not be that, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think so, but it's entirely possible. You never know. You have to interrogate people like that. It's kind of like how in the 50s they had to like find out who the communists were. You got to find out who the furries in your circle are so you can ostracize them. What if I asked your dad? That would be really funny, because I think he knows what furries are. Like I'm not sure if he gets it completely, but I think he's familiar with the concept. That's the thing, though, is he thrives on cringe, so like he would find <laughs> it funny. You would find the whole situation hilarious. What is the likelihood that your dad implanted those cringy communist ideas into your sisters just because he thought it'd be funny? Actually massive, not even kidding. No, and, <laughs> and he's also kind of a cringy communist. Oh no. Not in the way, like, he's not a communist, but like, he does hate the United States government and is like very prone to conspiracy theories. So like... He very much encourages my siblings with that kind of stuff. And he did the same thing to me when I was a kid. Like, I was never, like, a communist kid. But I was very much into, like, alien conspiracy theories and, like, like 9-11 conspiracy theories. And he spurred that on, like, massively. He, he was, like, 
Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> like, he... He's definitely a freakazoid. In that, like, I'm less, like, weird than him when it comes to that type of stuff. <laughs> but it makes sense, because he is older, and old people, I guess, tend to be prone to that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go to him into a conversation about... No problem! Next time I see him. He will absolutely discuss it. No, like, <laughs> he will not hesitate to be like, yeah, the US government did it, the CIA did it. And you know the crazy thing is that since he's a veteran who worked in, like, high-level military intelligence, like, it makes it more credible. Like, he kind of does know what he's talking about, but he's also a nutcase at the same time. Lactose intolerance is a fake allergy. I mean, some people die if they have lactose. Those people don't exist. They're not real. That's because they all died. Exactly. If you're dead, you're not real. Painful Fuck dead people. Or lactose intolerant. Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I just remembered that reference as you said it. Nice. That's classic. That is a actually good song, though. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I can't lie. If I remember correctly, the music video was cool too, right? I don't think there was a music video, but it was just like a tape peg with like a generic military dictator person. Oh, maybe I was making up the music video in my head. You dreamt a music video for painful death to the lactose intolerant. Are you gaslighting me right now? No. How do I know? How do I know that for sure? I'm actually not, but I just really, like, I can't say I'm not. That's the ultimate gaslight, to tell someone that they're gaslighting you and be lying. That's the, like, next level gaslight. That's powerful. What the fuck did you do with all my cats? I didn't even touch your cats. What are you talking about? Maybe they got eaten by a zombie. Let's Maybe see, they have... left because they don't like you anymore. Are you gaslighting yourself about your fucking missing cats right now? They just got pushed around. God, they were dispersed. So they weren't in their normal positionings. I hope you get angry about the status of your cats every single time you come out of the mine. <laughs> Why? You just come out like a raging alcoholic parent or something. Where the fuck are my cats? And just And just slap me around a little bit. And then you realize that your cats are still there. That's awful. It's funny though. <laughs> it's not. I have strong feelings about a lot of things. I've noticed that. That's how we're kind of opposite. I have strong feelings about very few things, and you have strong feelings about many, many things. Yeah, but what if you just stop having opinions about any things? Are you suggesting that? No, it's just a what if. Well then, I guess that would kind of suck. But that's it? That's the extent of it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I guess if I, I had no opinions about anything whatsoever, maybe that means that the opinions would be, like, completely replaced by objective facts. But that wouldn't be very human of me. What would you do if you could no longer drink plain water and could only drink, like, Minute Maid lemonade? I would, kill I would instantly jump off a building. It's that bad? Yeah, it would be that bad. I couldn't live like that. Imagine the damage that would be done to your teeth in, like, a single week of drinking only fucking Minute Maid lemonade. <laughs> that would be worth jumping off a building, in my opinion. What would you do if... You could only drink Mountain Dew, but like legally. These are some fucking stupid hypotheticals. Like, what if you are legally, contractually obligated to drink nothing but Mountain Dew? I would become a criminal and I would drink water. That's not a good answer. Yes, it is. It's not. It's not. No, what funny. the fuck is a good answer? There is no, absolutely no such thing as a good answer to that stupid ass hypothetical. <laughs> it's dumb. What if one day you got a letter in the mail that said you were the prince of uh, some obscure European country that exists, but nobody's ever heard of it? I would probably assume that some kind of scammer was involved. I mean, I think that'd be a reasonable assumption in that scenario. Yeah, that one wasn't a very funny question. None of these have been fucking funny in the slightest. What, what would you do if you were given three weeks to become, like, yo-yo champion of the world, or you would be, like, put to death? <laughs> I would try really, really hard to become yo-yo champion. You wouldn't, like, immediately give up and write your last will and testament? 
No, I would fight to the end. That's my style. I wouldn't just like lay down and die. There are some scenarios, but very few, in which I would <laughs> let myself die. One of those scenarios would be if I was legally contractually obligated to drink Mountain Dew. But in the scenario where I had to become a <laughs> yo-yo champion to survive, I would simply try my best. And if I died, I would die on my feet, not on my knees, you know? You die standing, not kneeling. Exactly. Apparently that, like, VeggieTales facts Twitter got suspended recently. That's sad. Like, I only know that because, like, a really sad funeral video was put up on, like, my <laughs> front page. Did it make you cry? It made me laugh. <laughs> Until you cried. Like, it showed a little montage of their tweets that was just like, what the fuck even is this? That's funny. What would you do if you were forced into a job as a coal miner? I would probably die of the black lung. You wouldn't, like, bring any safety equipment? I mean, in a situation where I'm being forced to do something like that, I would presume that it's probably not very safe for, like... No, you're getting not... paid and you have full benefits. It's, like, an actual job. It's just you have no choice in getting any other job. And I can't just, like, be unemployed? No. Well, and I guess I would just have to do it then, wouldn't I? I wouldn't really... <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do anything else. So I guess I would just do it, right? You wouldn't just accept being unemployed? I thought you said I couldn't do that. No, you can, but you won't be able to afford, like, housing or anything or food. Um, I mean, I guess I would probably do it then. Like, if the benefits of... Like having money outweighed the suffering of being in the coal mines, then I would, I would do it. I guess. I mean, oh. it would depend on how <laughs> shitty it was, though. You know, like there's some things that I wouldn't do in that scenario. Like, let's say you replace the coal miner part of it. You replace that with like, I have to be a 24/7 furry commission artist. Yeah. Like in that scenario, I would rather be an unemployed. But like, if being in the coal mine isn't that bad, then I'll just work in the coal mine then. I don't know, if you were a 24-7 furry commission artist, you could afford a really nice house. Yeah, but you'd have to be a 24-7 furry commission artist to do that. You'd grow numb to it. That's horrible. <laughs> Growing numb to something isn't a good thing. <laughs> that sounds bad to me. What would you do if your current boss came up to you and was all like, Hey, we're gonna move you into company housing or we're firing you. We're gonna pay you in company fund money where you can only buy company brand food and resources to live your life first of all i would quit second of all what are all these capitalist allegory like weird hypotheticals coming from like is your boss trying to get you to move into company housing right now is that what's happening no, no. <laughs> that's just like the m current like brain track i'm on it's a really weird brain track but yeah i wouldn't uh i wouldn't do that just gotta railroad the skeletons just right. Don't say that. What, don't say railroad the skeletons? No. There's nothing wrong with that sentence. If I said run a train on the skeletons, that would be <laughs> bad. <laughs> that, that would sound bad. The term railroad is very normal. I love skeletons. <laughs> I don't know about it. It's just, it's an obsession, honestly. It's... It's an obsession. I mean, that I explains the poor choice of words. <laughs> no, don't make it like that. <laughs> but it is odd how much I like them. You know, anytime a skeleton shows up, it's just peak aesthetic for me. I love them very much. It's like they're my favorite enemy in every video game. They're just too cool. I don't know why I like skeletons so much, but they've always appealed to me from an aesthetic standpoint very much. That should be my aesthetic, shouldn't it? Skeleton. Just gonna dress like a skeleton. Skeletons don't wear clothes, though. That's a problem for me. Get clothing that has skeleton elements to it. That's the key. Or I could dress like the skeleton murderers from Ghosts and Goblins and just wear like a robe at all times <laughs> and carry a scythe. Yeah, and have to that... play some ghouls and ghosts or super ghosts and goblins. That would be a good thing to record because that game is fucking frustrating. It's not. It's but... easy. No, it's fucking not, and you know it. If you've played any other Ghosts and Goobers games, you know it's stupid easy. Yeah, but it's hard in general. No, it's not. See, we should play hard games on this channel so that 
instead of just like relaxing like we are in this game, we can fucking rage. Because if we play Ghouls and Ghosts, I will rage on camera. If you found an unopened soda on the side of the road and you really wanted a soda, would you drink it? If I found an open unopened soda on the side of the road, like just would I drink it straight up if I just saw it there? Yeah, like a can. Hell no. I don't even drink normal sodas. I don't want one that's on the side of the fucking road. <laughs> what if it's root beer? I mean, like, all you gotta do is, like, wipe the can off and it's perfectly good. Cause, like, no. how could anything contaminate an unopened can? Don't say that, please. That's so horrible. <laughs> what? Foul beyond belief. The, what? I. What? You're gonna have to explain your reasoning. It's just. It's just a feeling. Like, there's something so, like, disgusting about that. Even though there's nothing actually wrong with it, it's just, like, so deeply bizarre and horrible. Are like, just because something is safe to drink doesn't mean you should. Because it's just weird. <laughs> now, if I found a can of Slurm on the side of the road, that's more than a soda. It's the ultimate extreme energy drink. Then I would have to drink it. You've been making all sorts of Futurama references today. By accident, mostly. I didn't even really watch Futurama. I've watched the Futurama so many times I fucking hate it. I will never watch it again. Yeah, you used to talk about it sometimes, but you haven't in a long time. I mean, I liked Futurama long, long ago, but it's like... It's too much. My family is the type who would always rewatch something they like every single day, so like, we'd watch through an entire season of the exact same season of Futurama, like, three days in a row and I'd fucking puke. I hate that so much. I could never do something like that. Like, if I like something... I typically leave it alone to like savor it. Like if I really like something, I won't like enjoy it because I want to like I don't want to wear it out. You know, like if I really, really, really like a song, I'll always skip it when it comes up so that I can listen to it during special moments. You know, like when I enjoy something, it's usually years between I well before I ever revisit it. Yeah. Like recently, we watched through terrain of magical expertise and i think the last time i watched through it was when the finale came out when was that even how did it be forever ago i think it was like 2017 2018 so that's a pretty good gap that's like enough time for you to forget the minute details no i love dome it's good very clearly a passing project and it shows it is it's the type of passion project that makes me wish that the guy who made it didn't have so much passion, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, stop being passionate. I'm just gonna cut in, like, every clip of the live acts in Rainbow Dude right here. That's a good idea. I would like that. I'm so glad that I'm finally the bug master. Master of bugs. <laughs> he did say that though. I'm still underground. It seems so. It's gonna become like Made in Abyss where you can't come back up anymore without bleeding out of your face. That'd be hilarious. I would love that. Oh, that'd be something to talk about. Give us your in-depth thoughts on Made in Abyss. That is a good conversation topic for sure, because honestly, it's really cool because it like the world building and it feels really natural in, in some parts, like just in terms of the way that it is depicted visually. Like I would say the visuals are definitely the strongest part of the entire series, because like even when the dialogue doesn't describe stuff, the visuals just give you an instant sense of what something is or how it should feel, and it's it's very evocative, but some of that is lost in translation in the anime i feel like probably because they have literally never read the manga no i haven't but i'm guessing in the way that because <laughs> you can't literally just like look at a page for 10 seconds in an anime like it has to have pacing so some of that is probably lost but also there's a lot of it that is just like yeah the world seems really cool but it's like the only thing that the characters exist to do is inflict suffering on the viewer. Like, literally, there's almost, like, no plot and character development that I can remember other than, like, them becoming more and more, like, 
like just suffering more and going through worse and worse things and like growing closer in friendship and having more backstory revealed but like not towards any end that is pleasant for the viewer it's just like more and more horror and it's like a vehicle to reveal more cool stuff about the world but it's also just like so gratuitous and awful it's just like god why sometimes also the author i feel like is definitely reprehensible in some way like i don't know i just get bad vibes <laughs> i almost like i would never give the author my money because i feel like he probably has a dungeon of some kind you know what i'm saying yeah it's not good oh, no. how did you feel about the ending to the anime where they killed big bad boy except big bad boy was all like nope i'm still alive and was all like please go deeper i barely remember what happened even with the exact ending part like I remember the part where, like, the child was <laughs> sacrificed. You remember him juicing his daughter. I do remember that. that Just was to be like, fun. you can't beat me, and he was all like, yeah, you really can't beat me, but I guess I don't care anymore. Yeah, that was kind of lame. I also didn't like how that villain was introduced, because he just kind of came out of nowhere, and then became, like, the biggest threat in the whole show, with, like, no character whatsoever. Like, every second that we talk about it, I remember another horribly creepy, gross thing that happened. It just built some kind of horrible subtext about the author's dark mind. But it's funny. It is funny, only in the sense that it brings me great pain. Would you classify Made in Abyss as a comedy? No. No, I would not. It's not funny. It would be nice to get a real education, wouldn't it? A real Minecraft education? Yeah, like if we went to video game high school and got our degrees. Did you ever see that series on YouTube, Video I Game High School? video game high school so much. I'm so glad that you know about it. God, I'm, I watched it like, I was a huge fan of like, all those types of channels that would make like, choreographed like, CGI and action shorts and stuff like i think it was rocket jump that made it and like, like freddy w and i loved that stuff at the time so i watched the entirety of video game high school and the whole time i was like jesus this is fucking awful but i also wanted it to be good and i was just a kid so at the time i think i like tolerated it because i wanted to like it but i knew deep down that it was sh really bad but it's quite funny because of how cringe it is i honestly think it through a single episode it's that type of powerful cringe. I haven't watched it since then, so like, I wonder how I would respond if I watched it now. I know, like, even as a baby, I had an inherent sense of like, this is terrible. Yeah, I think I knew it was bad. I just watched it out of curiosity anyway. I must have liked it enough to finish it though. I don't know why. Bad taste, poor decisions. It's possible. We still haven't watched the Smosh movie. We don't have to. I think we tried to pull it up once, but then we gave up immediately because it was just so bad. Yeah, I think that did happen. Literally unwatchable. I mean, they never made anything good anyway. They really haven't. Isn't the Smosh channel still going, just like with different people? Yeah, I think they like corporatized it. And then the two Smosh dudes. I think it's... Ian and Anthony. Yeah. I think they both quit Smos, but now the Smos channel is like just a generic company type of skit channel thing. I feel like that's a really hilarious, ironic way for Smos to go down. You can be the interior designer. You know, I think that's a stereotype or something about the gays. Call me it's gay? Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 don't hit me a minecraft character don't do that i'm gonna hit you in real life tomorrow no don't do that God, i can't believe you call me gay <laughs>